Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise God. God is an awesome God. Hallelujah and glory to God. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall be glad and rejoice in it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Welcome to the Tabernacle Trinity Hall. The show where I'm your host, James and Pamela. Harold, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. And we love God because God did what, Pam? Because he first loved us. Because he first loved us. Praise God. We love him because he first loved us. Hallelujah. He's a hallelujah God. He's a glory God. He's a God that's worthy of all our praises. Amen. Amen. Yes, he is. For this is today that he had created. And so, guys, be glad in it and rejoice in it. Praise God. Somewhere in today, something happened where you can be glad and where you can rejoice because it happened. For whatever reason, a purpose behind you doing something or something that you got caught up in or something that somebody else did for you or however it means it may have come. Amen. But guys, rejoice in that moment. Be glad for that moment. Praise God. He's an awesome God. Glory to God. Pam, how have your day been today? Been very busy. How about yours? Mine been busy too, amen. Praise God. I've been doing a lot of stuff. I've been meeting people here, meeting people there. And it's 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 funny sometimes, guys, how conversations, you know, will come about, you know. Praise God, you know. You know, you how one thing would generate something else, you know, and you know, God is awesome, God. Yes. And you find yourself just in conversation, you know. Uh, hey, how you doing? Doing okay? Hey, I like that you got. Hey, you know, that's, you know, hey, you know, I'm proud of you or whatever, you know, the conversation might be. Amen. Amen. You guys, y'all doing y'all doing okay out there? Praise God. God is awesome, God. That's good because this is, again, the day, a day that the Lord has made. Praise God. If you in Christ that you should be glad and you should rejoice in it. You should become aware of those moments. Amen? Amen. Because, see, those moments come whether you are aware of them or not. They still come. You know, that's scripture, you know. But are you aware of your moments when they come? That's the story. Amen? That's why we draw close and study to show ourselves approved unto God so that we can build our relationship with God, so that we can become more familiar with who God is. Amen? Amen. Like a friend. You know, you know your friends. You learn who your friends are, and you learn who your enemies are. And a lot of times you learn the difference between the two when you are going through something, you know, not when you're not going through something. You know, when we think about the, um, the, um, the, um, the sign, um, the parable of the son, the son that, um, the prodigal son, the prodigal son, thanks, pal. The prodigal son, when he left and he had all that money and he was doing well and he didn't know his friends from his enemies and he thought everybody was his friends and it was because of what he wasn't aware of, it wasn't because of what he was aware of, but he became very aware when his money went out who was his friends, and who was his not friends. Amen? And you learn that, guys. You see patterns, you know, in friendship or not. You see certain things at certain moments that will strike out, you know? And you need to pay attention to those moments that are striking out because those moments are telling you who you can trust and who you can't trust. I think back on a lot of times when I was coming up, you know, from a child, to a teenager, to a young adult, to who I am now. And I can look back on moments to as when certain people did certain things and how they would do certain things. And at the time, when you're not aware of it, you don't pay too much attention, you know, to it. But as you get older, you begin to, and as you experience life, and as you experience different patterns coming to pass in manifestation, 
then you begin to see who is your friends and who, who are not your friends. But God called us, the people of God, to also make friends even with real the people. Amen. Amen. I just say that people come into your lives either for a reason, a season, or a purpose, or a lifetime. That's true. It's for one of those reasons, and you got to be aware, you got to begin to define, category, what that is. You know, you got to ask God, um, God, what is it that you want me to see because I'm going through something? Uh, or God, I feel that you're directing me towards a certain way. What is it that you want a need for me to see because we need to be reaching and we need to be yearning for what God is doing in our lives. God said that he would do nothing without letting us know what he's doing. That's right. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, God, he considered the church to be a friend, his children. Amen. We know that God's the creator of all things, but there's a special meaning. You know, people can have children and they not be friends. The parents and the children, they are not friends when they get to a certain age or when they're coming up because they don't, their parent can be abusive, you know, to them or whatnot, you know. So, you know, you can be a parent and still not be friend, be friend your children. God, he befriends his children. That's why he gives us the word of God. That's why he gives us revelation. That's why he gave us, God gave us his son. That's why his son sent back the Holy Spirit, amen, through God, amen, that we can have relationship with God, amen. Amen. And so he tells us also how to have relationship with each other. Uh, with your Christian um, brother, with your Christian sister, with your worldly friend, with your worldly sister, with your worldly brother. He just teaches us how to be friend whoever comes within our grasp of relationship, pal. You know, that's just how great he is. Amen. He's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. When he, you know, he tells us to be kind to those who are not kind to us uh, as though we are heaping coals on their head. In other mm -hmm. words, he said, if your enemy thirsts, give them water. If they hungry, give them something to eat. If they are without clothing, need a coat, give them a coat. And he said, now, when he said, as though you're heaping um, coals on their head, coals is usually hot. It's like fire. But what he's talking about is you're not doing it for vengefulness. You're doing it because you want to cause that person to become mindful of the question, why are you being good to me when I'm treating you the way that I'm treating you? And that could be an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to work. Because I remember hearing a story way back when this atheist um, was dying and a preacher throughout his life would come and witness to him and talk with him and he treated him pretty bad. He's and he was telling the testimony of course, mm -hmm. how he spit on him, cussed him out, did everything. But that pastor did exactly what Romans twelve did said. And he kept doing what was right. Amen. And on his deathbed he um called on the Lord and got saved. And, that's and he was telling the story on TV. See, and that, that's why we don't judge a person where they are. We should look at a person the same way we looked at ourselves. You know, that, you know, God is able, you know, uh, what we was yesterday, God sees for what we are in the future. You know, we see ourselves for what we are, people, each other, where they are right then, right there. And so we are quick to judge people, but you know, we shouldn't be quick to judge people because we don't know what God is calling that person to that's in sin today. Yeah, we judge what they are doing, whether it's of God or whether it's not of God, but we are not judging the person whether they are going to hell or whether they are going to heaven. But we are to judge the things because we have the spirit of error 
and the spirit of truth. So we are to know what is of God and what is not of God. That's how we also set the offices, the offices in the churches by what we see that person doing and through prayer and through discernment and through the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You know, we don't just want to have anybody to be in a leader, leading, a leadership position in the church, teaching Sunday school, teaching Bible study, preaching. You know, they have to have study to show themselves approved. They have to, you have to see them to be approved, to be put in certain positions of the church. But we don't judge whether or not a person because they are living a sinful life, whether or not they're going to heaven or hell, because today, even though they're living in sin, tomorrow they can be called to um, uh, uh, um, salvation. Amen. They can receive salvation tomorrow, even though they don't have it today. Now, none of us are perfect. So we're not talking about, you know, hey, nobody is perfect. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about those who strive to live for God and those that do not strive to live for God. Those that do not strive to live for God, we don't judge whether or not they're going to heaven or hell, but we do know that if they continue to live the way they're living, striving not to live for God, and if death comes upon them, then the rages of sin is what, pal? Death. Amen. And if they change and find some salvation, you know, along the way, then we know that the gift of God is what, pal? Eternal life. Eternal life. Amen. So we judge the things that they do. Pal, you can read for us. You mentioned Romans chapter 12, uh, verses 12, uh, chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Amen. And see, with that, you know, we are all depending on one and another. And what God gives you, perfect what he gives you and be sure in what he gives you. Be sober in what he gives you. Know that you know what you know, okay, in God. Amen. And that's how we stay in our faith. That's how we grow in our faith. When we lose faith, and when I say we lose faith, really it, to lose faith to me meaning that, you know, you can have faith in different things, not just in, you know, in God. You can believe in anything, in everything. But to believe in God is to be able to, wow, have an eternal lasting of what that faith brings you, which is, which is eternal life. Amen. But you can believe in something and that what you're believing in don't necessarily have to be true. And what is not true shall come to not. What is not of God shall come to not. What is of God shall come to pass. Amen. Amen. So, so when we look at and when we think about this stuff, our reasonable service is we have the ministry of reconciliation. We have to perfect ourselves. And we are not perfect beings, but what we do, we indulge in the word of God is what we do so that we, we can become usable by God. That we become, our body is a vessel. Our temple belongs to Jesus. Jesus died on a cross and he paid for 
our sins with his blood. Therefore, we belong to him. We are a temple of God. We don't belong to ourselves. So we have to present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. This is our reasonable service. Be ye holy because God is holy. Amen. Amen. And so when we do this, we, we are given ourselves to be used as a vessel to help God bring his children back into the fold. Jesus asked Peter three times, Peter, do you love me? He said, feed my sheep is what he said. He said, feed my sheep. Sheep, amen. It's what he said. He told Peter, you know, and um, so that's what we have to do, guys. We have to put ourselves in um the position of being used. You have to consciously think about it. You have to consciously think, okay. Practice. Lord, let me think of you. Let me please you. Because sometimes we can get in the flesh and we're operating in ourself. So it's a conscious thing. Yeah. A, a daily conscious thing. It's a daily sacrifice. We got to daily carry our own courses, guys. We got to study to show ourselves approved. You got to get that. I, I talk to my wife every day. You know, I wake up, we say, hi, how you doing? How you sleep? You know, how you slept? You know, and all and everything. And we talk mm -hmm. about other things throughout the day. And we do this on a daily basis. We don't do this just once or twice a week. Amen. Amen. And, and I'm saying that to say this. You may not pick up your Bible and read it every day. You might pick up your Bible and read it every other day or whenever you do. But the thing is, what you read Discuss that thing with God, you know, allow what you read to be implemented within you, you know, have that re wake up. God, how you doing? Thank you for waking me up this day. And it's good to be able to read your word every day and have a word with God every day. But whatever your relationship is, however, your relationship is with God. Then you find yourself doing it on a daily base, on a daily base, whatever your relationship is with God and whatever your relationship is not with God. And if you're feeding that more than you are having a relationship with God, then that becomes your daily thing in your life. That's the course that you're carrying that's the sin that you're going to have to bear. Jesus already bared our sins. And so we're carrying our cross daily while we are living. Count of pure joy when you go through trials and tribulation, knowing that the trial of your faith work at patience. Let it work patience in you that you might be found what? Not lacking in anything, but to be perfect in all things. Knowing that you can call on God. Amen. Amen. Carrying your cross daily. Making that cross as light as possible. By being in Christ. Amen. Because his yoke is what, pal? It's easy and his burden is light. And so when you got him in your life, that cross feels, don't feel as heavy as it should feel. Amen. So... That's what we are talking about, guys, here, when we are talking about even what we are talking about right now, the new norm. The only requirement of a new norm is to be reconditioned to another way of life. And as you read here, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that is that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The only thing that's new in our lives is when we give our life to God and the old man become dead and we become a new creature in God. Amen. And so with the renewing of our mind, the way we think becomes a new norm. Our hearts are wash. Our hearts, the way we we, we feel about things, the way we go about things, who we are, 
all becomes new. We're taking on a new way of life, a new nature, a nature of life and not a nature of sin, not a nature full with darkness and death, but a nature filled with light. Praise God. Because the Holy life. Spirit is working in you. So he's giving you that desire to want to do things of God, to want to be pleasing unto him. If you allow him to. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Standards. When white mean purity, when black mean bad, when red mean danger or hot, when yellow mean coward, when green mean life, when purple mean passion or royalty, green mean to go, yellow mean caution or to slow down, red mean to stop, black means live, wire, white means negative, wire, green or brown means ground, wire. There are many standards and unlike styles, guys, again, or fashion, standards, they generally stay the same. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God is the standard that we should be aiming for. Amen. Amen. God is the true standard, and he does not change, for he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hey, guys, we got to choose to aim for the things that are of God. Amen. And we got to do it by according to how we are given. The more space we give to the Holy Spirit, the more room in us the Holy Spirit will make for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, guys, we're talking about, I want to talk, use the word socialism. And let me explain that because I've been saying socialism. I am talking about mass media. I'm talking about also to influence the meanings we give to things. And we do that mass media, social media, conversation on the phone, how we come together, the majority, to influence how we conceptualize the world. I am talking about how we, as the majority of the general population, would agree to a cause or not. I am not talking about the difference between socialism and communism as in political differences, but in differences to how we give approval to what is and to what is not is what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. God is awesome, God. So, hey, what is of God and what is of the world? That's what I mean. But in differences to how we give approval to what is and to what is not. Praise God. Pam, if you can read for us Joshua 24, 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. You got to put on your armor of God, guys. You got to make yourself, present yourself, your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your what? Your reasonable services. Amen. Amen. The ministry of reconciliation, guys. All of that stuff, it, it, it totals up to our purpose being in Christ, amen, which is to help God bring our sisters and brothers back into the flock. Feed my flock. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Amen. And this is what we have to do. This is what we are called to do. And we also have to be able to feed ourselves on spiritual Goodness, amen? amen, which is God, God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Why do people make choices other than to serve the Lord? Because they do not have the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. They have 
the spirit of error, but what I'm talking about is understanding what error is. Not being in error and calling it to be right is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when having the spirit of truth and the spirit of error, I'm talking about what understanding what is of God and what is not of God. And you heard Pam mention something about having the Holy Spirit that dwells and dwells within us. Amen. Amen. That teaches us the things that are of God and the things that are of man. Amen. Amen. He gives us the knowledge of the spirit of truth and the knowledge of the spirit of error. Amen. Pam, if you could read for us again, Ephesians chapter two, verse two, please. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And we ask the question, why do people make choices other than to serve the Lord? It's because the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And who is that? That's Lucifer. That's Satan. That's the devil. Amen. And that's why people choose uh, not to serve the Lord. Because they, um, well, you know, people say, it's hard for me to give up something that I'm so used to having. I get that. But when you study to show yourself approved, then what you're learning, you're learning how to feed your spirit. And as your spirit gets stronger, then you're more apt to change your way of life with the Holy Spirit working within you. Amen. Amen. He'll give you the desire. Amen. But it's your choice to want to do it. He's not going to force you to do it. Amen. He just presents it before you. And then hopefully you'll make the choice to say, yes, I want to. I want to read, I want to study, I want to, and once again, you know, this life that we live is a process. Amen. It is. It's, it's a process. It's a process. And so some days you're going to be on top of the world and you're going to be studying for hours. Mm -hmm. And then some days you may pick it up and read one script, one, one verse and call it a day. Uh huh. But it's a process. It's you, a process. You keep, you keep. You Press, keep at it. You keep pressing forward. You keep at it. You keep at it, whether you read it for hours or whether you read in one scripture or whether you skip a day or whatever. Yes, right. You keep at it. And you keep feeding the spirit. You keep feeding your spirit. You keep feed because what you feed most is what is, you become. As that's amen. Mm -hmm. What you feed most is what you are. Amen. Because that's what you're feeding. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing. That's what you'll become. That's what you are becoming. Amen. Um, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verses 3 and 4 reads, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Get this. In whom the God, small g, of this world, Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Remember, we said that they have the, 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 the uh, spirit of error, but they don't recognize it as the spirit of error. They don't understand that they are in error. They think that what they are doing is right, is correct, is moral. But we have the spirit of truth and the spirit of error because greater is he that is in us than he who is in what? The world, amen? Mm -hmm. Satan is in the world, but Christ, our Holy Spirit, Christ, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is in us. I'm going to finish reading the scripture. It says, Least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. See, if they was mindful enough to say, Lord, forgive me, then he would have no choice but to forgive them. Amen? Amen. But Satan keeps their mind in the dark. He keeps them blinded so that he can have their, his way with them so that he could work 
in the children of disobedience. Join us next week here on the Tabernacle Trinity Hall where our favorite lot of the bills where we can say to you that you, you are, are so beautiful. beautiful. God, bless. God bless. We love you. We love you. Praise God. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Amen.